Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The government of St. Lucia has reiterated its commitment to the general welfare of all St. Lucian workers. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney welcomes the accession of Guadeloupe to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. The Ministry of Agriculture now has increased capacity in soil diagnostics. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. The government of St. Lucia has restated its commitment to the general welfare of all St. Lucian workers. Shaping the core of its policies is the boosting of morale and the improvement of the productivity of the state. The reiteration comes as public sector unions and the government negotiating team continue dialogue on collective agreements. A meeting was held Thursday, 14th March, with all representatives expressing satisfaction with the talks. Nicole McDonald is the senior communications officer in the office of the Prime Minister. The government has addressed several long outstanding issues related to health and safety of employees within the public service and at our nation's educational and medical institutions. This is an ongoing process which will require continued dialogue with all stakeholders and the commitment of the requisite financial resources. The government reaffirms its commitment to the process of engaging workers and looks forward to the expeditious conclusion to the 2016-2019 public sector wage negotiations. The government remains confident that the cabinet appointed government negotiating team, the GNT, and the negotiating parties can reach consensus so that together we may move forward. The government encourages all involved in the ongoing negotiations to be responsible and allow the process to continue in a manner that will be beneficial to the continued development of our nation. The government is aware that the GNT has been meeting regularly with the various union representatives and also has several meetings scheduled with the parties involved in the negotiations. The government notes that the responsibility for successful negotiations lies with all parties acting in good faith to reach an outcome which takes into consideration the current economic climate and improves the working conditions of all workers. And that was Senior Communications Officer in the Office of the Prime Minister, Nicole MacDonald. Prime Minister Honorable Alan M. Chastney on Thursday, 14th March, attended a special meeting of the OECS Authority for the accession of Guadeloupe to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. The accession of Guadeloupe comes four years after Martinique's accession to the OECS. Leaders of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, held a special session on Thursday at which Guadeloupe was admitted as an associate member of the sub-regional grouping. The items on the agenda included exploration of the mandate of the OECS, the Regional Council of Guadeloupe's cooperation strategy and the priority areas of collaboration between Guadeloupe and other OECS member states. President of the Regional Council of Guadeloupe, Ari Chalas, expressed gratitude to the organization for facilitating the achievement of such a feat. He also highlighted priority areas for Guadeloupe such as education, healthcare and energy, to name a few. The accession of Guadeloupe to an associate member state of the OECS took place with the signing of an agreement. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney has expressed condolences to New Zealand following the shocking mass shootings targeting two mosques in which at least 49 people were killed and at least 20 injured in the New Zealand city of Christchurch. In a statement, Honorable Chastney said, quote, as a country, we condemn these deadly acts and stand in solidarity with our grief-stricken friends in New Zealand. The world remains deeply shocked by this senseless act of violence, and in this time of great sorrow and hardship, we pray for the continued strength and courage of the people of New Zealand and for the speedy recovery of those injured." End quote. The Lucia's fisheries sector has received some much-needed aid for the procurement of essential equipment. An official ceremony for the exchange of notes between the government of Japan and the government of St. Lucia for an amount of 1.8 million U.S. dollars. Here's Anisia Antoine. In November of 2018, the government of Japan informed St. Lucia of its intention to provide grant aid under its economic and social development program. 
On Wednesday, March 13, 2019, the two countries exchanged notes which saw the equivalent of US $1.8 million being allocated for various supplies and equipment within the fisheries sector. Deputy Head of the Mission for Japan, His Excellency Yoshinori Yakabe, says the grant is designed to enhance the island's fisheries sector. With this grant, the government of Central Asia will procure fisheries-related equipment such as storage coolers, fish aggregating devices, and a long liner vessel to improve the operational efficiency and hygienic environment, which is essential for the fisheries industry. This will also assist the government of Central Russia in achieving its policy objectives in food security and nutrition. Notably, the government of Japan will also contribute to this country's fisheries sector through the project for sus uh, strengthening sustainable use and management of coastal fisheries resource in the CARICOM countries. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, thanked the government of Japan for their incredible support to St. Lucia over the last 40 years in the areas of fisheries, disaster risk reduction and education. It's always meaningful when you receive assistance from a country that is a, a legend in their own time in these areas. Um, so everyone is very acutely aware of the prowessness of the Jap Japanese uh, for fishing. And we're very grateful at this particular juncture when we are seeing a shift in our government's policy towards fishing um, that we'd be receiving this level of support at this time. It is our government's intention to focus on improving the ability and the capacity of the fishermen to fish and helping them to identify new methods in order to be able to catch more fish, but more importantly, also to get more value for the fish that they're currently catching. Among the supplies for the local fisheries sector will be platform and countertop digital scales, coolers for fish storage on ice for landing sites, biogas digester and energy converter, and tablets for real-time data collection. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the drive to increase capacity in soil diagnostics and advisory services for agriculture concerns and research inquiries moved forward with the presentation of equipment by the Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund to the Research and Development Division of the Ministry of Agriculture. The distribution of reagents to the Research and Development Division of the Ministry of Agriculture marks a new era in the implementation of sustainable crop production strategies to ensure healthy, viable crops, an extension of the Agriculture Ministry's mandate to bring about nutrition and food security. The head of the Taiwan ICDF, Mario Shen, says the concerns about the health of a people should start with considerations about the quality of the soil our crops are grown in. According to him, Having the capacity to conduct soil testing and other diagnostics arms the farmer with additional tools to ensure they reap wholesome harvests. And by so doing, only products that are safe and which can be viable will be seen on the market. The reason why we can uh, increase or encourage each of the farmers, you can bring your soil sample that we can analyze the diagnostic your soil fertility and we can rationalize application right for the data to your farm. Head of the Research and Development Division, Hannah Romain, in thanking the ICDF for their donation, says soil health is inextricably linked to the wellness of a people. And as such, the work being undertaken by her division is also critical to the socio-economic development of St. Lucia. These materials or reagents will go very far towards assisting us in meeting our work program, the requirements of the work program. On a daily basis, our technicians are out there to ensure that the foods that are grown out there, 
that the soil status, the soil health, the nutritional status of the soil is, the, is in the ideal condition for the successful growth of a crop. We've been working over the years tirelessly to improve on the production of our foods. And uh, today we see that we, this step that we've taken is to ensure that our labs are properly equipped and that our technicians have the ideal reagents required to ensure that we have, um, we are able to conduct, pro to conduct proper diagnosis of our soil status. Ms. Romain added that this move is timely as agriculture officials continue their intervention to improve the banana and to ensure its viability on external markets. And that was Amanda Faye Clark of the Ministry of Agriculture. This is the NTN Nightly coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sport with Ryan O'Brien. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Schools of the nation's youth turned out Friday morning for the launch of the mentorship program organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports at the Coconut Bay Resort and Spa. During the launch, a welcome address was delivered by Director of Youth Mary Wilfred and District Education Officer Stephen Ogis. Program consultant Dr. Zyphus James also spoke at the opening. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, delivered the keynote address. Participants in the program have been drawn from the VFO Secondary, Miku Secondary, Chazelle Secondary, and the Piai Secondary School. Plans are continuing for the staging of the upcoming inter schools track and field meet and the inter district primary schools athletics championships. Southern qualifiers set for March 18th and 19th at the George Audlam Stadium. Northern qualifiers March 21st and 22nd at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. Inter school semi finals and finals are scheduled for March 27th and 29th at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground, while the inter district primary schools athletic championships are set for April 3rd, 2019. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is inviting all concessionaires interested in vending at Intersec and the Interdistrict Primary School events at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground to a meeting to be held at the Ministry's Conference Room, Shrieky Building, Upper Miku Street, on Wednesday, March 20th, starting time, 3 p.m. And as we look towards another exciting and busy new week, some highlights you can look forward to. The continuation of school's volleyball action and results from the VG Mollipopa Sports Complex. Mass United School's cricket moves into its semi-final stage following Friday's quarter-final matches. The ministry keeps an eye on getting its contingent in place for the 2019 Winnet Island School Games and a reminder to all netballers in training for the Jean Pierre Under-16 Netball Tournament. That training continues Saturday at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. That's your update for this week. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Bank of St. Lucia partners with the 2018 Youth Ambassador for St. Lucia, Jai Ogis, to host a women's empowerment workshop for students at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and secondary schools across the island. 
The workshop took place at the Financial Center on Bridge Street on Friday, 8th March, International Women's Day. We have more in this report. Approximately 40 female students from the Safa Lewis Community College and the various secondary schools across the island came together on International Women's Day to attend a workshop with a slight difference. This particular conference was designed to focus on women empowerment, but what made it more interesting was that it was designed by one of the bank's scholarship holders, who also happens to be the 2018 Youth Ambassador for St. Lucia to the U.S. Embassy. According to Jai August, partnering with the bank was pivotal in helping her reach more students and achieve her goals. One of the conditions of being chosen for this sport was that I carry out a social action plan and I chose to do two or three workshops. Um, I did one at the St. Joseph's Convent, one at the South Lewis Community College and in an effort to reach more people, reach more young girls and boys as well, although we focus in on girls today. Um, I chose to work with the bank um, to have a women's empowerment workshop. Corporate Communications Officer of Bank of St. Lucia, Annalicia Edmonds August, says that the workshop is the first of many initiatives the bank will be embarking on throughout the year to address some of the social ills affecting St. Lucian society. We place a lot of emphasis on youth development, so it was really important for us to bring in the school children to, to help Jai with her session today. Um, this forms a major part of our corporate social responsibility policy and what we're trying to do. And it starts off, like I said, a series of events that we're hoping to make a really bold statement with for this year and in the future. The workshop consisted of a variety of presentations conducted by guest speakers on topics such as the independent woman, rape culture and owning your sexuality by Dr. Robin Shalry White of Hustoire. So it was just really helping the young ladies understand that it's an entirely holistic experience. Um, it's more than just sex, it's more about your gender identity, your sexual identity, how you take care of yourself, your hygiene, um, dispelling a lot of gender norms and roles and myths and expectations that they've gotten from social media on how they should look, how they should dress, um, you know, and just having them come to themselves. Um, and I think it's, I wish all women in St. Lucia could have been here today because that's really what it's about. BOSL officials say that the company will continue to partner with creative individuals like Jai August and organizations like Hustoire for their significant contribution to the development of our nation's youth and to the development of the nation overall. Banker St. Lucia intends to make a bold statement this year demonstrated by the support of women empowerment, breaking barriers and tackling some taboo issues such as mental and reproductive health. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. Imagine being away from home, surrounded by danger and hostility, unable to escape or speak the language, and being exploited. It might sound like fiction, but for 40 million victims of human trafficking worldwide, it is a reality. Innocent people enticed by the promise of a new life, then enslaved into forced labor or sex trafficking. Human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs. See it. Report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tan Nisha, Monsieur Madame, Department of Human Responsibility, with information and government secrecy, as a GIS, as a MP Television National, P A N T N, how is it all? New Vela Kuyol, is it all? Primus Hutchinson. Government secrecy, j'ai un mot forcé pour y regarder commitment pour adresser la bienté les travailleurs secrecy. À des informations qui sortent en bureau Premier ministre là, qu'a dit qui? Le gouvernement a continué à placer un peu d'attention au commitment pour travailler le pays. Et selon les informations, parmi ces règles qui ont placé plus d'attention, c'est pour éprouver la morale et la dégoût de la production du pays. L'information a déclaré aussi que depuis l'année 2016, le gouvernement a adressé plusieurs situations qui ont affecté le pays pour un peu de temps, principalement ce qui est pour faire et puis santé, 
avec bonne protection pour travailler et qui employe et puis service public pays. Aussi, institution éducation exploité à cette ici. Information qu'a montré qui aussi qui gouvernement qu'a réétabli commitment pour engager les travailleurs à discussion et qu'on a gardé pour trouver résolution plus vite que possible à une négociation pour recevoir salaire pour depuis l'année 2016 pour 2019. Le gouvernement déclaré qui a information ça là il y a bien au courant qui gagne négociation yo te fait record souvent et puis ces divers représentatifs union pays le syndicat pays qui engagé dans négociation ça là gouvernement noté qui pour la bon succès dans négociation comme ça il faut toute partie agir dans bon foi et il faut pour travailler et arriver à dans yo agrément qui ca considérer situation affaire économique pays et présentement et aussi éprouver condition toutes les travailleurs. Alors, le gouvernement a fait un appel pour tout ce qui est engagé dans la négociation ça là, pour lui présent, pour embrasser bon responsabilité, pour quitter l'affaire à continuer à la façon qui a porté, qui a porté bénéfice à la contribution au développement du pays cette ci C'est la pêche cette ci j'ai aussi vu bonne assistance au gouvernement Japon qui était très mérité. C'est l'assistance à la c'est pour y trouver divers équipements qui sont nécessaires pour opérer. Mercredi, le 13 mars, la tenue présentation officielle entre le gouvernement Japon et le gouvernement Setlisi, côté y trouver 200 millions à l'argent Japon, qui a porté valeur de 1,8 million de dollars américains pour aider le développement du secteur pêche Setlisi. Il y a un grand grec de la mission Japon, c'est M. Yoshinori Yakabi, et le Premier ministre honorable Alan Chasney, si officiellement agrément en bas programme de développement social et économique. Le ministre qui est responsable pour l'agriculture, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a sommé puis l'autre officier gouvernement qui est aussi présent. Selon M. Yakabe, l'assistance à la qui a aidé à renforcer le secteur pêche pays et qui a éprouvé aussi l'opération secteur à la pour établir un environnement qui est plus propre et qui a une plus bonne santé pour l'industrie de la pêche. Il a ajouté que Assistance à la qui a aussi assisté le gouvernement cette ci pour réaliser l'objectif de venir pour la sécurité des marchés. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney remercie le gouvernement Japon à son compte cette ci et le peuple pour des gros supports au Jabay en façon pour pêcher, pour pêcher, pêcher plus pression et pour aussi trouver plus valeur pour pression. Il a aussi dit qu'il a apprécié très bien l'assistance à la avec l'assistance pays Japon pour 40 années depuis qu'il a assisté cette ci en affaire la pêche pour réduction des as et éducation. Le premier ministre Chasney a annoncé que c'est attention au gouvernement pour placer en pile attention à son habilité pour éprouver la capacité de pêcher et pour aider à trouver la meilleure manière pour pêcher à parmi ces articles de pêche qui sont ici trouvés. C'est une balance qui est bien avancée. Articles qui tiennent pression frais à sous la glace. Bateau pêche qui est 40 pieds longés, qui est chambre pour dormir, um, zin pour pêcher ton computer, tablette pour amasser information, diverses radios pour meilleure communication à parmi notre article. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a assisté à une conférence spéciale de ce pays Caribla, ça c'est OECS là, à Guadeloupe. La cérémonie ça là, c'était pour accepter le pays Guadeloupe, officiellement, quand il membre OECS. Là ça. Ça a commencé le 14 pour le 15 mois de mars à la Guadeloupe. La Guadeloupe a trouvé qu'on a même au ICS là, 4 l'année après la Martinique. L'activité a été dit que l'autorité au ICS là a tenu une cérémonie officiellement le 14 mars. Il n'y a pas dit si il y a eu un le directeur général de l'organisation, chef ministre pour ce pays, l'île de Vierge Anglia, dans ce BVI là, et président du conseil général de Guadeloupe. Et chef directeur de l'organisation ici à cela, qui a de ces cérémonies. Ainsi, depuis 1981, en Guadeloupe, se font les premiers contacts Europe-Caraïbe, organisés par la Chambre de commerce et sous le patronage de la Commission de communauté européenne et du ministère des Affaires étrangères et du secrétaire d'État au Dom Tom. Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasney, j'avoue, commission qui a séparé et puis pays New Zealand, regardez les malfoutis qui fusillent plusieurs mondes des religions musulmanes 
côté à peu près 40 monde perdu la vie et veut trouver blessé premier ministre on a chassé des remarques qui à ce côté gouvernement et Jean cette ici il casse cette cette en fond et puis gouvernement et Jean New Zealand et aussi la famille de mon qui perd la vie premier ministre a déclaré qui qu'on y a un pays nous véritablement haute qualité à criminel ça là et que nous cadou bout en solidarité et puis les amis nous en New Zealand il a ajouté qui mon sort de ça là soukoué la terre fortement à vous alta vie qualité violence ça là et quand il y a une situation qui a porté si tellement de stress cette ici qui a prédit by Jean New Zealand pour ça qui c'est ça qui blessé à trouver guérison plus vite qui possible et c'est comme ça nous à trois bout nouvelle nous nous avons monsieur autant pour te garder et moi avoir une invitation pour jeter plus moi encore dire quoi ça veut la ville là nous autres l'autre nouvelle accueil après ça nous ca vie pour Nisha Merci on Pearl Primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise Skies are generally fair occasionally becoming cloudy with a few showers Saturday partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with some scattered showers a marginal increase in moisture in the lower atmosphere will produce some showers mainly over the southern Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries was low at 5.32 p.m. and will be high again at 12.40 a.m. Tide for VA4 Bay was low at 6.59 p.m. and will be high again at 1.47 a.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 6.11 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NCN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Chow.